时候。好，那我们今天这个会议就现在就开始。呃，首先呢，先是代表五个 c o n o s 的团队以及我们的代表团向大家表示感谢，在周末的时候来参加我们这个活动。嗯，我先自我介绍一下，我是程小玉，英文是 Angela， 之前应该是通过邮件都有和很多的朋友有联系过。嗯，下面呢，我先向大家逐一介绍一下我们的团队。嗯、从最右边开始，第一位是 Neil Trevi， 他是 c o n o s c o o p 的主席，同时呢也是 Nvidia 的 VP 副总裁。下一位是 Alice s v i d i o 是呃，他是。呃 c o n o s c o o p 的执行总监，然后主要是负责 c o n o s c o o p 所有的市场的活动，包括市场的这些规划以及事情。接下一位是 Eric，Eric Eric 是来自欧洲的，然后呢，他也是在 c o n o s c o o p 里边有两个工作小组的，都是他负责。呃，同时呢，也是积极的、非常积极参与到我们所有在中国以及各个世世界各个国家的一些一系列的活动里面。再下一位是 Tom Tom Olson， 他是来自 ARM， 是来自美国那边，然后这次也是在参与到我们一个代表团里面，给大家带来很多最新的技术的一些演讲的部分。再下一位是黄英丽，他是来自韩国，呃，晃公司的 CTO， 也是今天给我们带来一些关于技术方面的演讲。他的公司呢是 c o n o s 的会员公司之一，所以是非常欢迎他。在下一位两位呢是来自日本的公司 Takumi 的 Tommy 和 Terry，、呃、他们两个呢也是我们会员公司的成员。嗯、最后呢，我要隆重的介绍就是 John p a t t y 和 c a s s i d y 呃，他们两个人呢是来自美国一个 JPR 的一个研究的一个机构，也是专门就是关注在这个图形图像行业的一些市场研究方面的这样一个公司。呃，他们也是在这个业界非常的有名，相信大家可能读过很多的报告啊，都是他们写的。所以非常感谢他们今天可以参与到我们，谢谢。好，像现在我们就开始今天的第一部分，大家可以看到有那个会议的日程在袋子里边。呃，第一部分呢将会由 n e i 为大家带来一个关于 c o n o s 的一个概述的介绍。好，谢谢。Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time to come out on a Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to uh, make this a worthwhile day for you. We're going to give you uh, an overview of the Kronos Group, which is an international organization creating the APIs to uh, program advanced mobile devices. And we're going to start out with an overview of the organization, so you can understand how these standards are being created, and then we're going to. Have a sequence of、um, presentations on each of the APIs in turn, where we'll go into more detail. And if you have questions、uh, at any time, please feel free to ask. And everyone will be here the whole day.、Uh, you can come and come and talk to us、uh, individually. We'd be more than happy to answer、uh, any questions that you have. So, what is Kronos?、Uh, We are an open standards organization. We have over 100 companies as members、uh, from around the world.、Uh, almost every country is represented、uh, in the Kronos Group, and we create、uh, standard APIs,、uh, application programming interfaces. These are the software libraries that you use to access advanced silicon functionality. Functionality like 3D graphics. Video acceleration, audio acceleration, parallel computation, and the newest working groups are now defining how to get to vision acceleration and advanced input sensor processing. We have around 15 different APIs、uh, that are currently being、uh, developed, and Kronos is open in two ways. The organization is open for any company to join. At any time, so they can participate in the development of these standards.、Uh, but the standards are also free to use by anyone in the industry.、Uh, you can go to the Kronos website, you can download these APIs, use them in your own product,、uh, free of charge.、Uh, there's no royalty to pay. So Kronos, we focus hard on trying to create the APIs that enable really good applications. 
to run on mobile devices, applications connecting them into the power of the silicon in today's uh, advanced mobile devices. So the Kronos APIs over time are defining and extending the functionality of these new generation of mobile devices. Smartphones over the last few years have evolved from simple devices to devices now that in many cases can replace your PC and is much more portable, uh, much more aware of its situation, many more sensors. And so the advanced functionality that makes today's mobile devices possible is being largely defined by the Kronos Group in this set of APIs. And these are the APIs that we will be talking to you about today, are being used on hundreds and hundreds of millions of devices. So if you can program these APIs, uh, you will be able to create great applications for very many uh, devices uh, in the market uh, today. So some history of the Kronos Group. Uh, we were founded over 10 years ago in uh, 2000, and our first mobile API was OpenGL ES uh, for 3D graphics. It's the most popular API, and we're fortunate we have Tom, uh, who's the working group chair of OpenGL ES, uh, who will give us an update on that API today. OpenGL ES is used now for 3D graphics on almost every mobile uh, uh, device on the market. In 2004, we launched three APIs, OpenMax for video, camera, and image processing, OpenVG for 2D vector graphics, and EGL for surface management. It's now the API that connects the other APIs together, and we'll have more details on that in a second. In 2005, we adopted Collada, which is our one standard that's not an API. It's a 3D file format for transmitting and reusing uh, 3D models and animations. And open SLES. S is for sound or audio, uh, advanced audio processing. In 2006, the original OpenGL, which was the first 3D API that was widely used in workstations and PCs, originally developed by Silicon Graphics in California. Uh, Silicon Graphics chose to transfer control of OpenGL to the Kronos Group so we could begin to evolve OpenGL and OpenGL ES uh, under the same uh, organization. In 2008, OpenCL was created. So OpenGL, G for graphics, OpenCL, C for compute. Uh, this is a parallel computation uh, uh, framework, and I will be giving more details on OpenCL uh, later in the day. In 2009, we created our first web API, HTML5, and the browser is becoming an increasingly important programming platform for web apps. And those web apps need to access all kinds of advanced functionality, including 3D. And WebGL is the API that enables that. And we'll have more details on that today, too. And then last year, we actually have even more APIs, an acceleration in the number of APIs. WebCL for parallel computation in the web. And then new APIs for input processes, stream input for sensor fusion, uh, processing, taking all types of sensors and creating high quality sensor information uh, for applications. And our newest API, it's so new we don't have a logo yet, uh, OpenVL for hardware accelerated vision uh, uh, processing. So these are the APIs that we'll be talking about uh, during the course of today. So Kronos has over 100 members, and we, as I mentioned, we have um, over 15 active standards today. This is a uh, chart of the current members. Uh, we have 
many companies, large companies, medium and small companies. Uh, we have many platform vendors, Apple, uh, Google, our members, many silicon vendors, almost every silicon vendor, uh, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, TI, uh, Imagination, ARM. Um, it's very important that we have these silicon vendors in the kernel screen so we get real requirements from the industry and the standards that we create really meet an industry need. But we have software companies, uh, tools vendors, uh, application developers, mobile operators, um, so we have a very good representation from all parts uh, of the industry. Question. Yes? Why all of us? Why it is? All of us. Arm? All of us. The database called the Oracle. I say it's, it's name all the Oracle. Oracle. Oracle? Yeah. Yes, Oracle is, is a member. The Oracle are uh, there for a number of reasons. Uh, they are developing the Java, uh, the Java environment, and so Java is increasingly incorporating more and more graphics and video and compute functionality, and so they're using uh, kernel APIs uh, for that. But you know, uh, Sun was originally the member that was acquired by Oracle, so Java and other computing graphics activities. Job or yeah. So uh, Kronos is proud that we have 30% um, of our uh, membership is from Asia. Uh, these are the Asian members. Um, but we don't yet have any uh, members from China, uh, which is why we're here uh, this week to begin to uh, change that and reach out to the Chinese industry. Uh, we really feel that uh, Chinese companies should uh, benefit from participating in Kronos and the Kronos Board of Directors, this set of companies here, you know, has made it our top priority to uh, reach out to Japanese industry, uh, Chinese industry and bring Chinese companies into uh, Kronos uh, as members. There's a lot of benefits to uh, becoming a uh, Kronos member. We have a very well-defined process to create these open standards. We rapidly generate industry consensus. There's a lot of um, um, feeling in the industry that standards can be slow. In fact, we believe that the stand, a good managed standard is the best way to generate industry consensus and efficiently generate new market opportunities. So, how do we do that? Well, we start by gathering requirements from the industry. We then draft the specifications. The draft specifications are confidential to Kronos members for uh, intellectual property reasons. We then publicly release the specifications once they're complete for any company in the world to use. And then companies will use those specifications in, in their ship products. Now, if you're a Kronos member, you can have a number of advantages through this process. If you participate in the Kronos group, you get to see all the requirements coming in in a very early stage. It's like getting a window into the future as to what future mobile technology is going to be. Lots of companies active in the industry saying we need to have sensor processing. Vision is going to be very big in five years. We need to start creating the APIs. Once we start creating the draft specifications themselves, every Kronos member has a vote and a voice in how those uh, specifications evolve. So if you participate in the process, you can ensure that the specification is going to meet the needs of your company. And as members get to see the draft specifications before they're made publicly available, companies have the choice to develop their products in parallel with the draft specification. It means that member companies can often ship their products faster to market than non-member companies. And then finally, because the specifications have been created for this very uh, robust process, products using um, these specifications 
uh, are well aligned with, with market needs. And we have companies like CTE and Quay uh, here in China that are using uh, kernel standards, which is great. Um, but we feel they're losing the opportunity to participate and get these other advantages. So if a member does join kernels, how, how does it actually work internally? Well, we have a working group per API. So we have 15 different uh, working groups. And any member can participate in any working group. We have three types of members. The normal member is the contributor member that lets you participate in any of the working groups. You have a vote in all of the working groups. Uh, we have the promoter members that pay a little bit more money and get a seat on the board. Uh, the board side decides the budget and the strategy for Kronos, but it's still one company, one vote. Uh, promoters don't get more votes than contributors. And then the academic members, uh, which is open to any uh, university uh, to join and participate uh, in the process too. So the working groups, they produce the specifications, but they also produce conformance tests. Conformance tests are just as important as specifications. If you have a specification and no way of testing whether an implementation meets the specification, it's um, really no value. So working groups put a lot of effort, and Kronos funds the development often of the conformance tests. The working groups also produce documentation and materials for developers. Uh, SDKs, sample code, reference cards, uh, man pages, uh, etc. Companies then who want to use the specifications uh, become adopters. They use the tests and they use the tests to test their products. And developers get the uh, implementation of the specifications from the OEMs and can use the APIs freely, free of charge. Developers never have to uh, pay anything and they always have free access uh, to the APIs. So these kernel specifications are quite uh, valuable. They have been created through a lot of effort. Um, in fact, we counted it up. There are hundreds and hundreds of man years have been invested to create these standards, often by the leading experts uh, in the industry. And yet, Kronos skids away these, this, uh, these specifications uh, for no charge. It's important that we protect the specifications and protect the intellectual property of the members. So we have a very good intellectual property agreement that protects the members and the specifications. In a, in a summary, the, the IP framework in Kronos is that the members agree not to sue each other for intellectual property over conformant implementations of the specifications. So if one member company implements OpenGL ES and passes the conformance tests, the 100 other members agree they won't sue that company for their OpenGL ES, even if they have patents that are relevant to OpenGL ES. So this is very strong protection, and it's a very valuable protection particularly in today's mobile industry, where there is a lot of patent uh, activity uh, between the various players, like Apple and Samsung, for example. So we have this solid legal framework for cooperation, and many people ask at this point, how does, well, how does Kronos make money? And the answer is Kronos does not make money. Kronos is a non-profit organization. We don't exist to make a profit. We exist to create market opportunities for the members and the broader industry. 